After 43 minutes of discussing other regulations, Clinton Planning and Zoning Regulations Committee finally gets around to discussing the court invalidated contractor storage yard regulations. This is that discussion and the blow up that followed at the end. Okay. We face a, a situation that we've not faced in, in this town, item two. Uh, in my tenure, we have not lost a, a lawsuit regarding zoning with respect to the process, and we've never had a piece of legislation uh, basically rejected by the courts. We now have a situation, and it, I checked our current regulations, and the current regulations are the 19, uh, 2016 regulations. So I suggested that, you know, you know, we got a notification that we lost, but nothing's happened. And it's incumbent upon us to state and to change the regulations, basically. And they automatically, basically, revert by law, by operation of law. But we should post them correctly. The next question that came up was a question regarding the um, violations that were against the property, against properties that were wiped away by the change in the regulations. And I, I couldn't get a, I, I asked our chair to get an opinion from the, our attorney. She didn't do that, but I was fortunate enough to meet with the CEO this afternoon. And he said, he believes, he, he, he believes that any outstanding violations that were wiped out are, in, are, are still in effect, basically. May I respond? Absolutely. We, when we brought the appeal, I signed the complaint. We did not seek an injunction against the regulations because if you, so right, the regulations are considered to be in effect um, pending the outcome of the lawsuit. Right. So anyone who acted on those regulations and you approved, those do not revert unless someone took an appeal and they're, and they can now say, well, those regulations aren't any good. So if you pass these in September of 2016 or August? August, August September. September. They September. went into yeah. effect. It affects September. September. So September. let's say someone brought in a site plan under the new regulations in October of 2016. And you approved them under them. Nobody appealed any of those uh, approvals. And those people would have the right to have those those people, their plans approved, whether they're consistent with, they become now a non-conformity because you're brethren to the old ones. What we expected was that if you wanted to change the old regulations, that you would bring them, bring back an idea. Now I've been told that some members of your commission said, put the, put the ones that were enacted in 2016 back up for a vote and we'll ram them through this time we won't have anyone that acts badly. And we'll just shove them down everyone's throat. Or, if it's, to put it in a different way, they were so good we ought to reenact them properly. We only, we only enacted them improperly. And clearly the, the only issue with the court was the process that was blatantly unfair. I mean, the, the judge agreed with me that, that, that nobody should have had to. And there were people the people here were treated shamefully by this, by members of this commission, shamefully. Um, but what the court said was if you didn't treat them shamefully and you voted the same way, you're probably going to get them through. But I think these people had points to be made. And I'll, and I'll just like to say one more thing. As an outsider, I don't live in your town. The proponents of this came and pitched to the commission, contractors are good people. They're all good people. 
they sponsor little league teams. <laughs> they pay taxes. So they want this. That's all they said. That's all the proponents said. That's all Willie Fritz said. This is a good idea. It's contractors want it. The other people got up and said, this is we think this harms some people. One of the things Mr. Neary said was, I bought my place in an industrial zone and people came and built after me. You know, they bought industrial land and built a house. Too bad for them. Incorrect. It, it, incorrect what? Mr. Neary said that. The Natleys built long before him uh, at had bought there. So it wasn't, it wasn't that it was, there was no evidence really that people had come and parked themselves next to something that was there. The people on Bonnie Lane said, we built our houses before Mr. Pinder built this thing, and Mr. Pinder's taken 20 years and it's not even done, and it looks like a pig pen. So that said, that was my view of how this went through, and because it went through that way, I, I think before you, you change the old regulations, which the court has put back into effect, you ought to listen more carefully that's why we're having this meeting. Okay. And, and, and clearly you don't have all the information. I don't. Nor does anybody here who weren't in the first several meetings where this was discussed and we're only in the public hearing. Meaning what? What? When you, you mean 2016? Or in the past two no, That's weeks? correct. In fact, we, we recognize, the commission recognized the need to change these regulations. For example, it calls for a 14 foot high fence. You know how many contractor yards are on Route 1? You think a 14-foot high fence would suit this town? No. So we recognize the need for a change. Our mistake is that we tried to recruit the Neary's to help with the language rather than do it ourselves. Absolutely. In fact, the record showed that Mr. Newson met with Kim Neary, okay. sat down the day after it was well, all done. have to re-argue. No, I'm just, I'm just saying, you're, you're correct. You, the contractors were recruited to write a regulation for the contractors. And what I'm saying is, what you wrote though was, for example, you allowed, you allowed, um, instead of a fence, you allowed um, landscaping. Uh, landscaping. But there was absolutely no specifications as, as to how dense or, or um, uh, 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 that would be. And I was involved with the body Lane people many years ago, and you had a requirement for some there of some um, trees. I haven't gone and looked at it, but the trees, the people on body Lane are 20 feet above. The trees were put 20 feet below and six feet high, and they were put on essentially ledge. Well, those are going to grow real good and be safe. They die. You know. So I think that was, <laughs> my clients believe that how you wrote it did not screen people, did not adequately screen the Natleys, did not adequately screen the people up on, what was the other road by the? Uh, Meadow Road. Meadow Road. Um, Bonnie Lane. And did not adequately screen people like um, Old Road. Beach, or, Beach Road Extension. So no, I don't claim to know, to know everything. I recall reading that, that um, there was a both that in that Mr. Knapp, in going through all the violations that there were, saw that there was there seemed to be some inconsistencies in how it was written and things should be made a little bit better. But um, all I'm saying is I, I'm not the one to talk to for what the regulations ought to say, but they ought to protect the people um, and not simply but all 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 the people. Because everybody wants what they want and really don't care about the rest of the No, people. I understand, but, but, so, the, but the fact of the matter is that the modern, the modern industri industrial sites, like Mr. Milano's, for example, those people tend um, to build things very differently than people did a long time ago. You look at a, a, a public garage, a repair garage, that was built in 1920. And those things were always junky. You look at them today and they're usually built very professionally. The stuff that I've seen that's gone in other than these contractors' yards have actually been fairly neat. And I'm not one that, that, that advocates that everything in the world has to be, has to be pretty. Because there are places where you, you need junky things to happen, but you put those in a place that 
nobody can see rather than let them be junky and there are people around them that they infect, should we say. Thanks. I, 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 I want to add to what you have to say, and I, and I don't want to make anybody upset. The 14 foot fence regulation followed now with any over 60 setbacks. That meant with those setbacks were 35. Giovanni was one of the contractors that came in here and he wanted to rent a simple space that was down here in town. The contractor, Giovanni, was looking at a cost of about $90,000 to put this fence all the way around. Within the setbacks, to be able to take 70 feet of frontage and lose that was exactly where everybody's going. Hey, I only rent. It's temporarily going to be torn down. It was a building that Mary's were in years and years and years ago. It had a historical use of a lot of different operations that were in there. And at that point, everything was backed off. Now, Giovanni's been here a couple times trying to purchase property, trying to say, I'd like to build a business in our community. And he's looking, and right now he's renting from Lake Milano. Okay, which is great. You don't see all of this equipment. Mike has done a great job putting fences and stuff like that up there, and I'll, I'll be very honest with you. The land uses Mike is probably one of the most methodical individuals yes. in the world, and if he sees a spot of oil on it, he's all over it. Right? And I appreciate that. I really do. But to sit there, and I'm going to say this in fairness, because I own a lot of big equipment. I've always had big equipment. What do you do with that equipment? Winter times, this is what these employees are actually having to do as far as jobs are concerned, repairing the equipment to come back out. This is what guarantees those jobs all year long. And, and I know for a fact that right now, our towns are doing it. People are buying used equipment, they're fixing it up. They don't have the money for brand new anymore. So they're making those winter hours, payable hours, so that people have jobs. And now this Kim Mary, she employs 130 some odd people in her business. She's responsible for their mortgages. She's responsible for their taxes. She's responsible for a lot of people and a lot of jobs. No different than you, believe No different than anybody else. She's a major employer in this community. So I sit here and I say, somehow, with these new regulations that come forward, something that can be done to appease both parties and all parties, because they, we do need them. We need them for emergency services. We need them for Every act of everything, from snow removal, all of those things, hurricane operations, it's, it's well needed. And those hours that people put in there, nothing is, nothing's carved in stone. Let me tell so you the know. regulations have to go forward that take care of the people that are sitting here. And they have to appease the contractor, not just one-sided. And I want to agree with you. Well, there's a regulatory problem and there's also a planning problem. If you have, it's where you allow the future ones to be created. We're not talking about the ones that employ people now. They're there. And, we get, and what we pass is not necessary unless they want to expand the use or change the use. It's going to have relatively little effect on them. So, very bluntly, I'm going to ask the attorney to make that sit here. Is Kim Gary's building legal? Because there was no appeal to that. You mean the one, the one that she built? The new one? The one that's way, the one, yeah. Yeah, the one that's way back from the road, or the, most of the storage yard is back from the road? Yes, the new the one. one. Yeah. 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 On that road. On that road. Yeah. yeah. This next to where Comcast was or something? Some no, 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 a short TV. TV, that TV, 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 short TV. TV. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's exactly what I meant. That came in, that application came in afterwards. But I'd like to make two comments on that. One is, yes, as a citizen of a town, I'm happy that the Near East can take all that junk that was by the Remetas, right on Route 1 that everyone looked at, and hide it back in the woods, where, as you drive by, unless you happen to have some reason to be there, um, you don't see it. That's a great idea. I do kind of feel sorry for the, the TV place, because they had a really, really nice operation back in the hidden woods. And there's like the, the, the landscaping when, you, when it was uh, hidden from public view, I think is what it says, or not in public view. You're landscaping a couple little bushes next to this, this, I think, nice building, and they have a storage yard next to them that looks, looks pretty dingy. But yes, that was approved. Um, so I'd like to make one more comment, because you said this about pre existing non conforming uses. Yep. It's not true that you can't do anything to a non-conforming use. 
non-conforming uses can still be regulated and, and have to comply with things. They just can't be so regulated that you destroy them, their, their, their right. That's a, a tough balance, but the, there was a case a long time ago that came up in Reading where a person had a horse farm, and it was clearly a non-conforming use, and the, uh, I think it was Reading, um, was in Northern Fairfield County, up by New York, down there, and, it's it. and they, they came up with one that said, you have to bring in a site plan, and you have to have things like a, a, a management plan for manure, you have to do this and that, and amongst the things they said was, oh, and by the way, your fences have to be four feet from, if you have a, animals there, four feet from the neighbors, so your animals don't eat their apples by putting their heads over the fence. The woman who owned the farm said, well, I don't have to do anything. Mine's non-conforming. And the appellate court said, oh, yes, you do. It's, it's reasonable that you have to come up with a management plan. It's reasonable that they took a few, couple of feet away from you, maybe on how you fence things. But it was reasonable. Now, Lord knows it's, it's tough to figure out what's reasonable in terms of regulating them. It's, it's, they're, not, they're not sacred because they're uh, uh, non-conforming. They're allowed to exist, but they can be regulated reasonably. That's all. And so, you know, yeah, what I'm, so I would say this, going back to the other Neary spot, the one that's next door to the Naplands, I looked at that before I argued the case. That place is a disaster. I mean, that place is a pig pen. Is, is this the one that's behind Milano? Between the Milano developments. The place is a pig pen. No, off the little one here? Well, it's the one on the, on the it's it's not, road. It's not place. It's not place. Not place. Not place. Not place. Not place. Milano's property is not. here. Tony, your property is here. Neary's property is here. And Mike does a wonderful job keeping it neat, clean, very well landscaped. My question. My that's question, not an issue. My question is this: the one that Mary has right behind, it's off of Route One here by the Water Company, yes. and behind Mil yes. Milano's new place. Yes. New England Road. Okay. Yes. Yes. Thank you. That's that good. has been a, I gotta say, it's been a different. It's been an eyesore yes. since. Yes. Wait a minute. It's, it's, been, it's, it's been an eyesore it's for so 20 uh, years. Yes. Does that have to be cleaned up? Should be. That's, here's what I'd yeah, like to say. You know, That's irrelevant. Talking about the is irrelevant. Talking about Milano is irrelevant. We're here to look at these regulations, see what stays in, see what we need to change so that we can put it back in front of a public hearing. Yeah, we want to come up with something that works. Really, I mean, to talk about other properties it isn't relevant to, to this. Well, I, I'd like to though comment on the general situation, okay? And the general situation, unfortunately, is in Clinton. Unlike many other shore towns, um, all of the big cranes and big equipment and all of that is hidden from the residential areas in many towns. It's put into a certain area, industrial area, where it's put there. Clinton, unfortunately, and I've lived here over 30 years, Clinton, unfortunately, has allowed spot industrial zoning to develop. So when you're doing your, and when you say, don't want to talk about this one, this one, this one. I think that it's important to look at, when you're considering this, the current sites which are uh, being encroached upon. I'm going to use uh, the Tony Natalie's as one. I'm going to use a situation where, um, uh, and incidentally, when, when was your prop, when, when did your father build that house there? We bought the house in 1983. 1983. So at that time, there was just what, on the others, just the there houses. Were houses. There were houses. There were no houses. So they were there before. And now, as you, as Attorney Lambert has said, and we observe this ourselves, it's a mess. It's an absolute mess. The encroachment has been allowed. And it's not just the daily trucks, it's the encroachment. So I'm using this as an example of things that have to be cleaned up because it's the enforcement that has not happened through the years. And what we're doing here tonight and going forward doesn't affect that. Well, yes, except that let me go back to the other thing about putting up trees or barriers or 14 foot fences or whatever. I don't care how many 14 foot or whatever you make it to be. If you're sitting on the backyard of the people who live on Bonnie Wayne, you see two cranes sitting there, which I happen to know are not legally there from, from what I understand of our regulations and from what I understand and have read in the land use office. Don't forget, I was on the Planning and Zoning Commission many, many years. 
uh, uh, all I'm saying is those situations should not be allowed. So tomorrow morning, go to the enforcement office and put in a complaint. Excuse me, excuse me. The complaints were all filed by the people on Bonnie Lane. Three years, they gave up. That I hear you. That's not what this body does. I'm not saying about complaint. You're going to. This body is going to make regulations that are going to affect the ability of whether these people can continue to do the things that well, they're doing. Well, I, I don't believe so, based on what you're no, saying. Because right there, now there, are non-conforming uses that are, are there, not. But there are two issues. And one is what we have going forward, and the other is enforcement. And we have, I, I as a, an individual, think that we have, we don't have enforcement. The, the ZEO is your agent. So when you say this body doesn't know why, I, I, I am the ZEO I, is very much aware of that. Why the Planning and Zoning Commission? Not if you talk to our first select. Well, <laughs> he's your agent. But the, the town, you obviously don't have your own budget, I understand that. But um, all I'm saying is no, they do that, that agent an should be answering to you. Um, so let me just give an example, because again, I don't want to write your, I, I just saw that everyone that came there said it, it, that your regulation was not protecting them. Mrs. Rometta has was saying, the whole, one of the points of that was to clean up the place near her and move it to the, the place that got approved. But you can ask her right now, it's not cleaned up. Um, and, Mr. Is it? Is it? and Mr. Knapp entered into an agreement where he said, oh, this is very vague and whatnot, so I'm going to give them some months to get off it. And it's still, a, they got the stuff off the front, although there's some truck I think they're yeah, for sale there. there. But the other stuff is, yeah, is just... The junk is still there. That's so well, let me just go, go again to the regulations. One of the things that I think got passed, and, and you may have approved it on some other application, on non place, the, the old Neary Corporation place, one of the things they came and said to you was, we should be able to have mafia blocks temporarily right. within right. six feet of the street. Temporarily, when I drove by there before I went to arguments, there's weeds growing up in them. And that is what, the, what they seem to think is temporary. I suppose it is in that, is that even the pyramids are going to crumble something. <laughs> but, but it's about six feet or ten feet from the street. There's all of these, and it's not, it's not something that they're using to line into their driveway. It's a storage yard for them, clear up to the street. And so I put to you, no one else gets to use clear up to the street to put their uh, equipment um, and whatnot that I know of. And when you rewrite this, it seems to me, all I guess what I'm saying is I don't think the balance, when, when you folks took a look at it and said, these, some of these regulations are too harsh to these people. Um, what you gave away, um, uh, which you could reenact, uh, what you gave away, it seemed to me, was far too much. Um, uh, you allowed people, you allow them to, in the storage yards, you, I believe you had some setbacks, and what people said was, wow, this takes a big, you know, unsightly use and crams you into a small part because the setbacks are big. So let's, uh, let's decrease the setbacks. Well, the decreasing the setbacks essentially said you, uh, said you could use almost all of your yard for your storage. You can, you can, you can uh, go clear up as long as you have these, some trees and stuff there. And I don't know how to rewrite it, I think you, but I think the input should not just be from the contractors people. I think the people that came here and got poorly treated ought to be listening to it. So that's all. Can I ask you a question? Since the judge ruled this, because that, that, I think I heard Alan say that, and I think you heard it said it too, but since he knocked this down, what's in effect now was what was before that? At this moment, yes. At this moment, that's the law. And and a right? month from now, you could reenact the stuff that we didn't like. Go to a public meeting and all that stuff. Right. And if you, if you did it, if you so did it. Well, it stands now, the old regulation stands. So, right. Until you make, until, 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 until you make. In terms of setbacks, what I read here is that in the I-1 and I-2, they changed the setbacks from 10 feet to 5 feet. I mean, that, that, that's well, a that difference, but for it, us to look at. visually, 10 feet to 5 feet is not going to change visually. Uh, I, you know, I don't have the regulations in front of me, 
I do remember that when I looked when I looked at the changes of the one that got defeated in July of 2016 and the one that got got put forward a month later, some of the things were actually more favorable to the contractors. At least one thing yeah. was more favorable to the contractors after their proposal got roundly defeated in July. The one that came up the next month was not did not take much away from them at all. Looks like they had a 50 foot setback from residential. From oh, no, no, that's area. only, that's not, not a unit. That's the residential zone. Yeah, zone. zone. That doesn't help the Natalie's one bit. That says if, if, you, if you happen to be so, that's what. It, it's, it, it's very difficult to, to remove old injuries oh, wait, wait. With, with, with zoning. Enforcement is another, you know, you enforce it enough and people think maybe this is not the way to approach this problem. Maybe I will change what I have. You know, as, a, as a matter of fact, what I mentioned today to one, one of the uh, representatives was, uh, the question I asked was, do you have a blight uh, ordinance in this town? Yes, but just no, residential. Yes. Just residential, well, then, that's what a town meeting is for. Well, yeah. now, I'd like to bring that forward, the blight yes. comment, because as a matter of fact, Alan, and I, I want to discuss this with you, um, yes, we do have a blight ordinance, and I did happen to look it up because this is something we had discussed. However, it's quite old, and it's, it's uh, residential. However, I do recall, when I was on planning and zoning, but we were there at the same time, um, this goes back a while, that we had enacted a new blight ordinance. Do you remember that? I do remember. It's not, it's not, it's it, the one that's posted on the town website is um, from a customer. It, it, it's it's not, um, We've got blight uh, yeah. on all kinds of commercial properties right now. I think. Uh, all, I'm seeing, all I'm seeing is that's not your bailiwick, but it's a remedy. It's another remedy besides zoning. Uh, in other words, I don't expect a public garage, you know, where we, everyone here drives a car, I assume, or uses a car, and we all need them fixed. I don't expect those places to look like McDonald's. Um, there's going to be some, some rough and tumble stuff because the car is greasy and it's, it's it, you know, you open the hood and it blows up because it's overheated or whatever. They're not the per most perfect places, but, and, and either a contractor storage yard and Lord knows we need them. Um, uh, the question is how do you how do you make them acceptable? Um, I told you I don't live here. I live in North Haven. When you drive through North Haven, you see Bay Crane on I-91. There are dozens and dozens of, of things. But you know what? I don't see them. You see them. You know, you're driving on I-91. As Empire Paving is there, Sick Tucker's got dozens of, of pieces of heavy equipment there. Um, and we Long ago, there was a thing built in town called, uh, you know, uh, a Pratt and Whitney. No one in North Haven sees that unless you live up on a hill. No one's going to see a million square feet of Amazon. Because it's, it's screened from where residential people and people doing going about their business. There's only the, only the 8,000 workers that work at Pratt and Whitney had to go to Pratt and Whitney. The rest of us in town just, you know, thank them for their taxes and whatnot and on our way. And that's that's the trick I think that you have here is how do you how do you put them in places that don't um, um, affect uh, your your voters. Yes I think your your voice yes you want to welcome in as best you can people to employ. Because None of us, it does, a town doesn't work unless everyone's employed or unless most of the people are employed. The most important thing is the people's jobs in our community, their jobs that support yep. the mortgages, that support the purchasing, that pay the taxes. That You're absolutely correct. Right. All here, I, and I, and I, and I want to clarify most, most of the people who live in town yeah. work elsewhere. Most of the people who work in town live elsewhere. Anyway, all I'm saying is, is if, well, if what you're just trying to, to do, we have the, the commission is trying to do is to change them from the old. Uh, I just want my people to have some time to, to be consulted in an equal fashion. I mean, let me just put this once again from a perspective, 
from a perspective in terms that was not argued in court. But how do you think it looks when the day after there's a defeat of an amendment that a lot of people came to, the uh, a representative of the um, of your, of a commissioner meets with the loser in the absence of anyone else. That meeting would not have been properly posted under the Freedom of Information Commission because you need 24 hours to post it. That says, I'm going to meet and talk about this. Um, this meeting was posted, for example. So he met the next morning with the loser. I had a lawyer of 120 people. Everyone else, and, and came up, boom. What the two of them wanted was put forward. And of course, you voted on it, and you go forward to the whole commission voted on it. But to me, that type of input just is not a process in it, uh, the way that I would want my time to work. There were people who were opponents, they had views, and their views had not yet been incorporated into it. That's, and so I would hope that if you do look at it, you look to, the, look to some of the people and come up with the balance. That's, that, that's what we're trying to do here, make a decision how to move forward. So what is it, what is the people we should ask what they want. Well, I, but they, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not, I did not come to be there to be there, tell you how to write a, a regulation. So I represent them in, in what their views were. And so they haven't really articulated <coughs> all the things they, that they want to change now. I, I, you know, and I appreciate it. But let me tell you one thing, that planning and zoning has acknowledged that we had a, we've had a serious enforcement problem. I mean. We recognize that. Uh, two, we're here today because we're trying to answer the question, what's the best way to move forward? And I think what they would like is, is some time, is some time to come up with something, some, some input to you. But right? I, you know, this is the, today's day one. Yes, pretty good. And that's what we've got to do. And we don't want to wait too long because the, I think there are people who, as you say, articulate, let's just re-bring this thing forward. But we, we are going to make a recommendation to the commission as to how we go forward. Well, what, what do you think? Do you think that next month we can we can have something, some suggestions for Alan at a meeting like this? I think that that would be what well, I'd like to hear from, uh, come on, this is the, where we are, the board of, of directors here of our association that uh, with this lawsuit. Uh, Tony, I definitely want to hear from you. Um, well, one thing I'd like to clarify, what, what constitutes a construction storage yard versus a junkyard? Because basically that's what they are running now, it's a junkyard. I, I think you find that the junkyard is defined, you'd see that some of these meet that criteria, because the junkyard is defined. There's equipment there that hasn't moved in years, and it's unmovable. So at that point, doesn't that become Junk? Yes. That is not no, equipment. I, I don't disagree with you, but that's not what we're here to do. No, we can't no, no, I, I go back that, that and change the things in the past. No, no, but you changing these regulations you doesn't could, change what's happening now. You could, well, you you could, could go, go to the regulations. The contractor's yards have to have operable equipment. You could do that. Yes, you could change the regulations and say that you can't have, you can't store it. Are we going back to the May 1st, 2016? Existing regulation? Well, that's a starting point because that's, well, that's what the law is. How would you like us to give you input? Cross off, make notes? Uh, you sure. Know. The, the best way is a Word document like that I've copied where you show the changes. Huh. You redline it. You redline it. You redline the changes. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Because that's what, when you that's say what we judge, do. We're going to be yeah. doing. The judge knocked it down, so the old one is in effect. So you go to that. I think from a Dan, from a, a realistic point of view, you, look you know the that, that the new one gains support. So you need to look at the new one, too. Yes, to right. And to see what there you, you find um, intolerable and what parts you, you don't find intolerable. Well, uh, you know, you can't, I wouldn't advise just looking at the old one and starting from that. Because you have input that... No, I would look yeah. at the new You have input that there was a majority at one point that yeah. wanted to... Yeah. Um, to throw that out and put this new one in. And, and the problem that we have at 314 is also his problem has become a junkyard where there are burned out 
trusses from reruns from reruns that have been stuck in the property, and there's now an artificial Christmas tree rotting there, an overturned wheelbarrow, there's a Bailey Bridge stuck up on Ralph Macri's property, hidden in the weeds, and it's just a junkyard now. Do you have a new CEO, by the way? An intern. An intern. One day a week. Did the one guy quit, and we haven't hired him yet. So I think but that's a continual fight in this town, too. Yeah. Yeah. By the way, it's a problem statewide. It's not only us. We found in the search for a CEO, we've, you know, the typical thing to do is to go steal one from somebody else. They're a good one. Yeah, but they're very hard to steal. And they get yeah, stolen by steal. cities. They, don't they get stolen by cities with big budgets. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. there's not enough coming out, not enough to get trained, and so there we have the sixth or seventh town in in our size range that's looking for CEO. Well, the only thing is, just because we don't have the CEO doesn't mean we don't need to have regulations in place that are that are protecting people. And the value of their yeah. property is devaluated. And I think Tony's a perfect example here, a great deal. So that has to be addressed. Well, if you could, if you could put this up either four weeks or five weeks a month, whichever way you look at it. Yeah, uh, normally the regulations committee meets. The, uh, the third Wednesday of the month. Okay, so whatever. I don't know whether that's four or five weeks away. Yeah. The third Wednesday of next month. Yeah. Mm -hmm. we'll, we'll that would be a month from now. Okay. We'll see the four weeks or five weeks. So I, would also, I would also like to, um, on any notifications, I'd like to make a request. Mm -hmm. uh, John Lambert will be representing us through this whole process, and I'm sure that in our, he has a vast knowledge of idea. regulations. Well, I just want to make a point. He has a vast knowledge of these kinds of regulations in other communities, which would be very beneficial and we certainly are going to run everything that we thoughts that we have by you to see that we uh, uh that, you know that this is our so what we're so what, going to do. what are you asking we're asking that he be notified if, if there's any meetings well, you, know, you get the same public notification everybody else does we can't if we did it for you and not for someone else then they're the next ones that brings us to an appeal in ways yeah, well, you can right. sign up, you can subscribe and get, you'll get no I was going to say, you can't. Call, if you want, I mean, I mean, get, if you want something, call the land use office. Yeah. It's not coming yeah. out of the commission. You can't do that. You know what I'm saying is, all I'm saying is that we're asking that you notify as the attorney representing all of the people that are here. Yeah. But there's, no, there's, no, there's no claim, there's no story now. There's no if you were out in an adversarial, a special meeting, how do you post it? You wanted a whole meeting Friday. John, you can't have a subscription model. Yeah. Subscribe. I know. I know how to okay. subscribe. So we'll do that. So we'll just do, all I'm saying is the, is the proper chance. We have trouble getting a meeting together. Going back to the other one, just a comment on Wouldn't you, wouldn't you look, wouldn't looking at Gilbert and Madison's who have had, I mean, they don't have this, this thing like you look like that shank, but they certainly have had the problem with, um, the, the problem both ways with the top of the truck. It is highly popular, and yet they, there are problems because the person who has a restaurant says, gee, they're parked out in front of me. I'm paying taxes, I'm paying this, and this guy isn't. But they seem to have come up with a solution. I'll look at the place. Pardon me? The place in Guilford. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. The place in Guilford. Yeah, it's a classic place. example. It, it, Summer is a huge draw. Yeah. Yeah. So, so getting back to this, if we want to hear moving forward, is that this group is going to make some recommendations to, to you as a chairman of this group. To the commission, to this group, yeah. To this group. And, and, and they're going to look at the... And we'll, it'll be part of our deliberations. Yes. We're and going to look at the old that prior maybe a week prior to our next meeting through through the land use office yeah but we'll try to get it a few days so you aren't looking at it right we yeah. have no. we'll get, we'll get some fair enough Thank you. I think there has to be, and I want to say this as a final thing, I think there has to be some, some bending on both parts, and both parts to be able to come forward to be able to, to do this. I wanted to just say that one of our greatest times in our community was when 9-11 happened and we watched the Neary Company put an American flag huge on the cranes. It inspired our community. 
to no end. And at the same time, an eagle the next year actually built a nest, and it was alive on television. People were watching that. It was inspiring. And I saw that from the hardware store almost a mile away. So sometimes it's just really hard to be able to appease everybody. But there are good, good things that happen in that community also, too. And I'm not going to say that the Neary's are to be off those people. I, I was talking I, about a whole other Neary. We have had nothing to do with that. Yeah, yeah, that's a positive yeah, thing. Yeah. I'm ending the meeting on a positive you know, Exactly. I'd like to say something on my own. I mean, this, this maybe is just incidental. But I'm, I am offended at the way that P and Z handled the matter in the very first place. And then when we sent uh, letters to the Ethics Committee, the, the Ethics Committee refused to deal with it. And I feel so, I don't know, maybe an apology is what I want. I don't know what I want. But I, I just hate to, I, I just think it's not right to, to let this, the way P and Z handled the situation from the get-go. I, I think that was very wrong, and I think that there needs to be some kind of a corrective action. What it is, I don't know. I think the best apology is to get it right. Yes, yes it right is. Agree. There you go. Let's put, let's put, let's forget as much as we can and go forward trying to figure out a solution. Oh, and, and another positive note, it was nice to see, it's nice to see that a, a father had a daughter follow in those footsteps and to buy another piece of property be able to expand the business to provide more jobs yeah. and is one of the leading contractors in the state of Connecticut. She is. Right. She is one of the leading people in our town. The, the patients in cleaning up Main Street and that moved over down in Elwood, if their building isn't even done yet. They're constantly trying to build and make that better every day. So I'm looking forward to the transition when it does get cleaned up and they don't need that storage area and they can get it all under one roof out in the back, out in the backyard. So that's, maybe this coming this year. I, I would, I would like to roof. refrain from condition talking about specifics. <laughs> We're really aimed at getting it right the, across the board. The only reason I bring up specifics is to come up with examples of what you're trying to fix. That's all. Well, if you can bring I, up some examples. Because everything's new going forward. Yeah. It's, it's not to aim at a person. No, and I, yeah. I, I, I want to make that point too. I'm not aiming at any specific guy, but I have to use examples of situations that exist mm -hmm. to be able to well, see this is what we do not we, we have to, to put change. that in the form yep. when it work, if, if you know just as you know what looks bad if something works why does it work right. and then we can put that into the regulations mm -hmm. thank you thank you for coming we recommend that you send letters to the commission that we can read as we as we review the commitment, I think your input is, is crucial also. So those letters that they come to email can be sent to us so that we can review them before. I think those are those are you. Mr. Chairman. Thank you. I'm sitting here trying not to say anything, but I think uh, Ms. Knight had it exactly right. This is a political process. It was not it was not sensitive to the needs of the people. It was done to satisfy a contractor who was sitting at the table, who was challenged, should have been asked to leave when he was badgering people. That process was very ugly. I hope that in the future, as long as we're going to let bygones be bygones, but we should not forget what happened and how it happened. And at some point, an acknowledgement needs to be made that the people that are elected are here to do the public service, not self-service. And unfortunately, there's a tremendous amount of self-service that goes on because people are afraid they won't be nominated again because someone's in control of one of the town committees. And that sort of, that kind of process corrupts everything. And that's what happened here. We all know that's what happened here. And, and I hope we don't let it happen again. And if we don't, we'll, we have a better chance of getting it right. Thank you, sir. Well Amen. Said. Thank you, for Thanks for your opinion, but I disagree with you. Of course. <laughs> of course you do. Of course. You're a Lane Duck appointment. You just uh, almost slandered most of the commission, and I, I think you're wrong. No, I'm not all here you. to be self-serving. I'm talking oh, here. I don't care. I don't care. Your whole commission you know is totally invalidated. Okay. The, you have to turn this meeting so we can have some real words. You're a Lane Duck. Uh, you're a Carl Mary Standing. Okay, okay stop. Please.
This is not the place. You want to yeah, have well, you know what? At least I made it. How's your electric going? Come on, guys. We're You're done. a very good shirt guy. We're done. I'm, uh, I'm very mature. Very good shirt. You're a late dog. Come on. You can do that. Come on. We can discuss this in the morning. You're only here because you're corrupt political. This is exactly what. You got that on tape? Because I'd like a copy of that, please. Yeah, it's only soon. I'm apologizing now for this. But that's what it, that's what okay. it, if you think you're going to get just results from this guy, you are kidding yourself. Mm -hmm. You couldn't be more wrong. You are I kidding am yourself. I'm the commissioner are, on this committee. Oh, come on. And we can all laugh at that, but they, they won't. Come on. We're adjourned. But this is when, when it's it's, we're trying to do it right. Then try. They really try. Don't let this guy and Gary Busty dominate the process this time. Mm -hmm. Because that's what happened last Thanks time. Thanks for your opinion. Mm -hmm. Disagree with you. Yeah, that's fine. But you need to listen to the people instead of just mm -hmm. Carl Mary. All the people. Okay. You need all the people. All the people. All the people. Not just Carl Mary. Mary. All the people. I have no Not just your Carl Mary. Your hey. We'll control this commission. Get your facts straight. Oh, you don't even know anything. You just yeah, hold your little mind to the contractors. You think that nothing that happens to the people in this town really makes a difference. This conversation's no, no. over. You, what, you, what that's fine. I don't want to have a conversation here. I want you out. I don't want people like you involved in town government. And I feel You're just a freaking button man. I don't even know what You're just a button man. man. I feel people You're just a that reach that came in here and is corrupting the government. Don't. You're a freak. Please, please give me a copy of that group. Do that politically. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Don't do it in my committee. They did. Do what you will. And a good time with that by all. This video provided as a public service by Kirk Carr, the Kirkster. Thank you for watching.